Uh, in this video, we will learn how to reconfigure TLS to your Redis cluster using KubeDB. There can be four types of reconfigure operation in TLS. Uh, you can add TLS, remove TLS and update your TLS configuration. And uh, another option is uh, rotating TLS certificate, which will increase your uh, expiry date. So let's look at my workstation. Here you can see I have already deployed a Redis cluster. The version is 6.2.5 and uh, there is six ports so there this is a three shot configuration so there is uh, three master and three replica so each master has one replica so let's exec one of the ports to see if we can extract information yeah so now we can set get and extract any information without uh, any certificate because i have deployed this uh, certificate this cluster without any tls so let's set some value Now, uh, when we want to add TLS, uh, we need to apply off request here. So KubeDB manages TLS using uh, Cert Manager. So I have installed uh, Cert Manager. Uh, let's have the, let's see the ports of Cert Manager. As you can see, there is three ports running uh, in Cert Manager namespace. So you need to install Cert Manager to uh, to manage your TLS certificate using KubeDB. So Cert Manager provides issuer and cluster issuer these uh, to assign the certificates. So you need to create a issue, create a issuer or cluster issuer. Issuer only works in one namespace, and uh, cluster issuer works over the cluster. So to create the issuer, you need to have a secret, and in that in that secret, you need to uh, provide a CA certificate and CA key. Let's uh, see the cluster issuer. Let's see the issuer YAML. Here you can see that in the issuer YAML, uh, the API version is startmanager.io slash v1 and kind is issuer in the metadata section. We have name and namespace. Name is Redis CA issuer and namespace is demo and secret name is Redis CA. So let's get that secret. As you can see, I have already created a secret that name is Redis CA. In the Redis CA secret, uh, you can see that uh, there is TLS key and TLS certificate, which is CA certificate and CA key. So <clears throat> let's create the issuer. And now issuer is created. So uh, now we can deploy the YAML to add TLS. Now let's have a look at the YAMLs. Here you can see uh, I have created I have created the secret from uh, certificate, TLS certificate and TLS key. And that secret is used to create the issuer. And we use that issuer to uh, create the, uh, we use that issuer when we add TLS. So that issuer is uh, used to uh, sign the certificates digitally. So in the right side, you can see that I have uh, add TLS uh, ops, request, uh, ops request YAML. Uh, here API version is ops.cubedb.com slash v1 alpha 1 kind is redis ops request. In the metadata section, you can see that the name of the ops request is at TLS and namespace is demo. In the spec section, we have the type that is reconfigured TLS and uh, database reference is redis cluster. And in the TLS section, we need to provide that issuer reference we have created. So issuer reference here is uh, redis CA issuer and API group for that issuer is startmanager.io and kind is issuer. And in the certificates field, we are providing different uh, TLS configuration. Here we uh, LIS is server, subject is uh, organization is kubedb, and uh, DNS name is localhost, and IP address is 127.0.0.1. <clears throat> and uh, let's look at the ops request. So here you can see that this ops request is now uh, progressing. Uh, and database phase is critical. That means that some of the replicas cannot connect to master because uh, when we uh, when we add TLS to the cluster, first we create the certificates, then we uh, wrote, uh, then we uh, restart all the ports with that certificates mounted on the port. So the ports are being restarted. This is uh, a smart restart. So what happens is first we will uh, restart the replica ports, and after that we will uh, restart the master ports. So uh, as you can see, the replica ports are being restarted. Then we will restart the master ports. <clears throat> and now let's have a look at the 
now let's exec one of the parts which is restarted. So as you can see, we cannot get any information without uh, the TLS certificates. So uh, wh what happens is when this node comes back, they want all the communication to TLS secured connection. So the other parts that are not restarted yet, they don't have TLS option. So the new part cannot connect to any of the existing ports. So the new part will wait until other port is restarted and comes back online again. So uh, after all the nodes come back, uh, after the restart, all the nodes can now do communication via TLS, TLS secured communication, and then they will form the cluster again. So uh, it takes some time to all restart all the ports and uh, create again cluster using uh, TLS secured communication. So uh, let's wait a few moments so that the cluster is uh, created. Now, as you can see, the, the uh, a master pod in shard two is being restarted. So the both the ports in shard uh, zero is restarted, and both the ports in shard one is restarted, and both the pod in shard two is restarted. And as you can see, our obstacle is successful. So that we have successfully restarted all the ports using uh, TLS enabled. Now all the ports are TLS enabled. And our uh, database phase is still critical. So <clears throat> it means that uh, the ports are now creating connections between them. So uh, let's wait a few more moments so that the database phase can become ready and uh, the ports establish connection between themselves. So meanwhile, we can try to execute a port and see if we can uh, get data. So as you can see, uh, this pod does not give us any data because uh, we are not connected to it using TLS. Now uh, let's connect to this database using TLS certificate. <clears throat> now uh, let's see if we can get the info about the nodes. So here you can see all the nodes in now fail states. That means that uh, the IP of the ports are not restarted. So uh, when the ports are, uh, we restart the ports, the, the port get a new IP. So all other node does not know, know about the new IP. So the other nodes contains information about the old IP of this node. So they <coughs> try to update this table uh, using, they announce their IP and other, other ports in the cluster take a note about this IP and try to update their uh, cluster node file. And in this way, all the IP of the nodes gets updated. So let's see if it is updated or not. No, so uh, it is still not updated. So let's wait a few more moments. So let's exec uh, another port to see if that updated is uh, IP table. So let's again connect uh, with the TLS certificates. As you can see, now no node is in fail state. So all the nodes have updated their IP table with the uh, new IP of the other ports. Now we can uh, we can get data because we have connected uh, with TLS certificates. Okay. Uh, okay. We can just yeah. So we got the data and let's get this. 
yeah so we can uh, get data from the cluster and we can again uh, set data yeah we can successfully get and set data and get cluster information so in this way uh, we can add a tls to a cluster that was not previously configured with tls and similarly we can remove TLS from cluster if we need, and we can update the TLS configurations along with uh, we can rotate the certificates. So uh, thank you for watching. The, this is how we can uh, configure TLS. And in the next video, we'll look how you can expand volume using uh, KubeDB.